Welcome everyone. I'm glad that you joined me today and if this is your first time or if you've just joined me recently, I'm in the process of letting my hair go gray. So if you're saying what in the world is with her hair, I'm in transition and I told my son, my middle son the other day, I said, don't be surprised when you see me. I'm letting my hair go gray and I'm in transition and he texted back, I am too. <laughs> Gut punch. I tell you, when your kids start getting gray hair, that's a whole nother level of parenthood. But today we are going to talk about summer and how it is a great time to save money. A lot of things can be done in the summer. Swimming, vacations, camping, all kinds of fun things. And we want to have money to do those things. But we can offset that by saving money in other areas. I loved saving money as my kids were growing up. I had six kids to feed, three were boys, and if you have ever raised sons, you know that they are always hungry. They are a bottomless pit. So we would do things that were cheap. We would have cheap food so that we had money to take vacations, to go camping, and to spend time together as a family in the summertime. And some of the cheap foods that we would make, and that I still make, are egg salad sandwiches, tuna sandwiches, bologna sandwiches, fried bologna sandwiches, which is one of my favorites. You could have peanut butter and jelly, cheese and mayonnaise sandwich. You could have a grilled cheese sandwich. All of those are cheap. You can buy a few ingredients and make it go a long way. And you can feed a lot of people without spending a lot of money. Um, some of the other things that we would do besides sandwiches were casseroles, and I became a casserole queen. Tater tot casserole, tuna noodle casserole, chicken noodle casserole, goulash, all of those things that you could throw together and then bulk it up with pasta to feed a large group. And many of those were fast to put together and very, very affordable. And then one of the last things that my husband and I do a lot of now is salads. You can make the salad any way you want if you keep some of the ingredients on hand. You can put in your almonds, you can put in your dried fruit, your fresh fruit, you can put in meat if you want some meat on top of it. I prefer mine without meat, but my husband likes meat. You can keep all types of cheeses and we freeze our shredded cheese so that we can just pull it out when we want to and have that available. I like Parmesan. He likes the mild cheddar on his salad. There's so many ways to make a salad and have a different type of salad every night just by changing the dressing. So these are a lot of ways to cut back your food costs in the summer. Because if you're like me, in the summer when you get hot, you lose some of that appetite, which for me, that is not a bad thing. And so we take advantage of that by serving some of these cold items or some of these easy, cheap items to throw together in a hurry so we can spend more time outside and doing the things that we want to do. One of the other great things about summer is being able to grow some of your own food. And if you have not been a master of this in the past, it's never too late to try again. I have found more time since we have sold our business and I'm just working one full-time job to be able to, to experiment with growing more of my own food. I showed you in one of my last videos, I have a whole bunch of container gardens going outside because I have so many roots. I also have two old bathtubs that I'm using as a raised garden bed for me to plant things in that are decorative that I have painted the sides. I also have a wash tub that is an antique and a metal apple basin or wash basin that I'm also using. So I use a lot of these things to experiment. And then as you can see behind me, I have stuff growing on the inside of the house as well. I've grown things all winter long. So this is a way to not only brighten up 
up your home, but bring a little bit of life into your home by having plants that are growing all winter. But now we're talking about summer savings. I have been saving my seeds. When I have a zucchini, when I have a pepper, when I have anything that has seeds in it, old potatoes, I get those prepped and ready to garden with. I have several potato plants that are growing outside now that are just from old potatoes that I cut up and dad would always have me cut them where there was one eye per piece and then he would have me dry them for two or three days and then plant them and then use some sort of a little hoe or something to keep the dirt kind of loose around it. He said that would make it easier for the potatoes to grow. Now when they start to flower and when they start to die back they're ready to be harvested. So we have several potato plants going outside. I have some tomato plants going outside. I have some green pepper plants in here. A couple of them are just this big but I have grown them from seeds that I dried from supermarket scraps. I also grow lettuce from supermarket scraps and celery from supermarket scraps. There are so many things that you can take and plant them outside or start them in water and then move them outside so that you have produce growing. One of the new things I've started is I've started taking carrots and cutting off the base and then putting them in water. And as you can see, I'm growing carrot tops. Now this will not grow a carrot, but it will grow carrot tops. And you can harvest those and you can eat those or you can dry them and you can blend them up into a powder or blend them up more coarse like parsley. Put them in a mason jar and use them in your soups and use them as spices in your cooking. As you can see, this is only a couple of days old and it's already grown this much. But you can also, when you're growing carrots outside, you can cut those tops off, let them dry for a few days, pull all of that leafy stuff that's dried off of the vine, grind it up and have your own set of spices that you harvested that are fresh that you can put in your food. The zucchini plants I have outside, my daughter saved her seeds and dried them for me. And if you remember me talking about these medicine bags that you have when you go to the pharmacy, they are great for storing things. And I showed you in another video what I used some of them for. But I'm using some of the other ones to store my seeds. So here are all of my green pepper seeds that I have dried and stored over the winter and I've marked them green pepper and now I can keep all of my food seeds in one little pouch and I can keep my flower seeds in another pouch and they're all organized and I know where they're at. So as I dry them, I can continue to save them year after year and use them and not have to buy seeds. Now, if you grow sweet potatoes, you can eat the entire plant, like the carrot top, but regular white potatoes, the top and the leaves are poisonous. They are part of that nightshade family that I've talked to you about before that will kill an animal. They are poisonous. So you don't wanna eat the tops of things unless you know for sure that it's okay to eat the tops of things. Now, carrots, sweet potatoes, broccoli leaves, collard greens, lettuce, all of those things are fine to eat the greens off of those plants that you grow, which just adds more to your kitchen to choose from as you're cooking that you didn't have to pay for. And if you're saying, I live in an apartment, I don't have room to do this, you can use plastic storage tubs, you can use a bucket, you can use many things to start a container garden if you don't live in the country or have a place to actually plant them in the dirt. I've even taken old garlic that has dried and pulled it apart and planted it and grown garlic. 
So many of these things can be used time and time again, even if you haven't got to them in the kitchen or as you're prepping them, you can use them to regrow some food or to regrow some seeds. So if you strive to live a more natural, self-sufficient life and spend less money, which is probably why you're here, then I encourage you to look at growing some of your own food. That self-sufficient way of living is so rewarding and so comforting and so reassuring because you know that you can do things to help supplement your budget in addition to spending your time to work for money. There's better nutritious value when we can harvest it straight from our garden, straight into our house. So many of those things in the store are hybrid or artificially ripened, and they just have lost a lot of the nutritional value along the way. Peace, tranquility, and serenity can be found in growing your own foods. I hope that maybe you will try a thing or two this summer and get excited about trying to grow your own food. So I hope that this video has made you more excited to try some different things to save money this summer so that you can use that money to do things that you want to do. Being more self-reliant is always a good thing. So thanks for watching today and I hope to see you in the next video.